This is where we bring you all the latest in-game news uh, that's going on right now. And boy, do we have some uh, some interesting information for you. First and foremost, we're going to be mentioning some games. Now, I don't know what you're thinking. What? What do you mean you're just going to be mentioning some games? Well, yes. Well, this is something that I'm going to be trying to do every time uh, we have gaming news in order to, well, keep you guys informed about all the games that are coming out, things of that nature. There are games that have come out that you probably haven't heard of because PlayStation or Xbox or anyone else hasn't really been talking about them. So, for the most part, this is actually what I'm going to be doing. So, here it goes. A uh, Story of a Gladiator is an actually a uh, small little title, indie title. It doesn't cost that much money, actually. Uh, I believe in pounds, it's like 10 bucks. But it is available in, place, uh, in the U.S., and it's only ten ninety nine. Uh, he's here's actually the page that I have for you guys right there. Ten dollars and ninety cents. It actually comes with a very interesting things. So it's set in this world, uh, this gladiator uh, world. It is not multiplayer. It is a single player experience. However, there are all these different uh, types of characters you can portray individuals as well. Different. Ba there's a. There says there's only uh, three arenas with 36 battles and three bosses. That's not to say whether or not that all happens within one uh, arena or it's each arena has 36 battles and three bosses. But that's uh, kind of something that, you know, kind of should look forward to looking. Uh, but it says over 30 enemy gladiators and 20 animals, each with unique fighting strategy. So that alone is going to be uh, interesting to see. I wonder as well if this in itself, uh, the fact that they're all different colors, if that's going to, if they're saying those are different animals. Because uh, I'm trying to think of what type of animals they could have, but it could be, it's just a color variation of those animals. And as you can see, it looks like a little fun, uh, a fun little title for you guys to play. Um. Like I said, it's not going to cost that much, but it has a lot of unique like stuff. It's roguelike mode available for those. Uh, yeah, I think it's something that should be fun, uh, entertaining for for anyone. Uh, Gameplay-wise, it actually looks like a fun little game that a lot of people would uh, most likely enjoy. And obviously, it has a story mode. Whether the story mode is... Whether that story mode... Ooh, got chills is good i mean that's that's pretty much up to you to decide whether this is going to be a great story but for the most part it looks like it's it's pretty well done it doesn't look like it's half-assed like most games nowadays and it looks like you would probably have a, a really good time with this but like i said i haven't played this but hey you may be interested in playing this who knows uh, and yes, this is definitely doesn't seem like it's a kid's title. So yeah, uh, you get to have pets. You can have your own pet and stuff like that. Uh, your own people to, uh, to fight with. Uh, but that's, uh, yeah, that's something to kind of look forward to. And then I just wanted to bring that up uh, for you guys. Found out about it and I thought, okay, you know what? I think people might want to know about this. And hey, it's available as well as for Xbox One, a PS4, a Nintendo Switch, and PC. So there you go. Uh, now let's move on to the big news, which is apparently uh, the corporate director is leaving Kojima Productions. Now the corporate director's name, uh, as you see here, is Ken Ichiro Imaizumi. I believe I'm saying that correctly. Probably not, but who knows. Uh, but apparently, yeah, he's leaving. There's really not much information about why he's leaving. Not a lot of people even try to talk about it, but apparently he's been with uh, with Kojima for this is almost 20 years that's really a long time but from what people have seen from some sources according to this article is that he's leaving because of just uh, I don't know they they just couldn't you know I guess get along or uh, with other people uh, that where is it yeah that that he just, he couldn't really, I guess, get along with uh, these other other people that are making the game. Uh, 
It says, one source claimed it was due to a disagreement with Kojima Productions' other directors. So it could be that he didn't really like the direction that this game was going or what this game was going to be. Or probably didn't understand it. There's a lot of people that didn't really understand what Death Stranding was going to be or what it is. Uh, that's why there was just a bunch of mixed reviews. Kojima came out and said, oh, because people are interested in, are more interested in, like, in American first-person shooters. I don't think this is necessarily the case. I think that's just a lot of people don't really understand what the game was meant to be. It's a, I mean, even with Kojima trying to explain it, it was still pretty unclear what the game was and what it was trying to be. Uh, it was saying there was a lot of, you know, connections and stuff like that. But even in the end, there's still, you know, some questions people had, some questions that were not really answered. Um, but I think this is kind of something that uh, that may affect Kojima Productions. Uh, they're, the guy just... Uh, just leaving, you know, the corporate director just leaving is not a good sign for the company. However, I mean, you still have Hideo Kojima uh, there, so and a lot of other people there. But if more people start to leave, then you actually might see, you know, things change. But apparently, Hideo Kojima is also stated that he wants to be working on a horror game next. So that's something that he's going to be doing, and that's something that's going to be really interesting to see what direction he goes. Um, we already seen what he did with PT, the playable trailer. I still have it on my PS4, but yeah, that's, like I said, that's pretty cool. It's pretty interesting to see. Uh, yeah, we'll see exactly if he talks about why he left, if even he, he will give the, you know, a real answer for that, or we just kind of leave it up in the air. Who knows? A lot of these people don't really mention why they leave a company, but usually we can, you know realize whether it's something that just they just couldn't see uh the future that someone else was having or what they had it could be a lot of things but yeah that, that's what's going on there and who knows how this is going to affect uh, kojima productions going into the future all right let's move on next to well this to call of duty sorry right there uh so call of duty is going to be coming out with even more incredible information uh just i mean not information sorry about that uh, updates there's going to be new maps all these different types of things it's it's going to be released and i believe this is all for free as well which is very interesting it's a season one so that in itself is going to be interesting to see it's going to be available for all platforms so i wonder how this is going to just affect them because they want to be making money so they're most likely going to Put maybe microtransactions for certain things like maybe cosmetics and stuff like that for different skins. I think that would be a smart idea for them to do, um, considering they're releasing all these different things uh, for free. And I think this is something that they're going to be working towards more, uh, so they can kind of have just have a game that they just keep continuing updating, kind of like what Fortnite is doing. And I think that would just make it. Uh, make it a great hit people already love it they love a lot of aspects of it there is a lot of heat with the whole activision blizzard thing of everything that's going on uh as well as you know people just leaving blizzard and all that but we'll see what happens and what transpires uh with this but uh hey if you're interested in all these game modes this is what's out there for you you got all these you got some new maps, you got Crash, you got Vacant, Shit Man, those are all multiplayer maps. You got Port for Ground War, you got Cargo and Atrium for Gunfight. You also have new multiplayer modes, Reinforced, Gunfight, OSP, no idea what that is. As well as Infected, which is an all-time great map, uh, the, I mean, not map, mode that people really love. New Special Ops Experiences, Bomb Squad, Grounded, Pitch Black, just, these are all amazing. These are all just really great. New weapons. M7 holder, no idea what those are, but if you guys do, let me know down in the comments below. And yeah, it's gonna be uh, this December 3rd, season one. That's gonna be something uh, to look forward to, seeing you know what's gonna happen. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much all the info that we have uh, that I have for for that for Call of Duty. And let me know if you're looking forward to that or if you're gonna just pass and just not support them anymore. Uh, let me know in the comments below. And let's move on next to the grand, the resistance, the main event, the 
final attraction, and that is, of course, uh, this, uh, which I titled uh, Xbox to be PlayStation next year. And the reason for that is because from the looks of it in this article, you actually get to, you know, hear a lot from Matt Booty, uh, and you get to hear a lot of just everything that Xbox is working towards. They're trying to make it as seamless as possible so that you can just literally play all your games. Like, any Xbox game will be playable on the Project Scarlet when it gets released next year. Uh, that in itself is going to be very interesting to see. Uh, especially because, well, a, uh, PlayStation is doing this whole backwards compatibility. However, there's a whole question of whether or not every game will be compatible or not. And what is actually going to transpire. Whereas in Xbox, apparently, is just any game, any Xbox game will be playable on there. It just It'll just play. It'll be seamless. So there's not going to be really anything of like... Oh, is this, you know, is this going to have better graphics? Is this going to have this? Is, what, how is this going to be able to be played? Is it stream? They just said it will just work. And I think that's something that's really great, especially going into the future, because a lot of people want to bring these libraries of games that they purchased uh, and be able to play them on their new console. I think it's great. I'm glad that it's going to be carried over. Uh, I wonder if their save files will be transferable as well or will they have to restart i would most likely think they would be transferable considering they're trying to make it as seamless as possible but we'll see once it fully comes out and they have a, a large array of games as well as studios working on games on first party games as well as third party games third parties working on first party games for their consoles and they uh he said for the first time that they're actually just super excited to be launching all these titles, these first titles, and me talking about it, it gives a, I said, a, a different type of energy. Uh, they have so many studios now, uh, first party studios, so now they have a wide range, that, you know, having them come out this year, uh, some next year. It's not necessarily going to be like, oh, 15 games within uh, one year, but you can definitely expect maybe three or five uh uh, at least once a year, which would be just instrumental to the amount uh, of games, because a lot of people do want to play first party games. They want to have a reason uh, to purchase the console, and they're actually super excited about that. They're actually saying, you know what, we want to have like a large array of games available for you to play, uh, you know, on launch day. And from the looks of it, that's exactly what they're going to be doing and what they're going to have. Uh, it's super exciting to see because this creates a lot of competition. And I wonder what PlayStation is going to be doing because as of yet, there really hasn't been much news about the games that will be, uh, you know, the first party games that will be coming out on the PlayStation 5 or whatever it will be called. Uh, I think it is PlayStation 5. But yeah, we'll see exactly what's, what's actually going to transpire. So... Yeah, it's up to you to decide uh, if you think that PlayStation is actually going to have something up their sleeve and release a game. Uh, let me know down in the comments below uh, what you think. Uh, if you think that, you know, maybe I'm wrong that PlayStation, no, PlayStation is going to, you know, definitely beat out uh, uh, Project Scarlet-esque Xbox and then they're going to stay on top. From everything that I've been seeing, it doesn't seem like it's going to be going in that direction. I think PlayStation is going to be trying to do something else and it's going to cost them dearly. Uh, Xbox seems to be going in the right direction and towards a new future. But that's, like I said, just my opinion. Uh, if you guys want to read the articles, all the links are down below to everything that I have talked about. Uh, again, thank you all so much for watching. And until next time. I will see you guys on another episode of Gaming News. And for more videos, make sure to click over there. And don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Visit my Patreon. Support me in order to be able to create more videos like this. I'll give you guys shoutouts if you like. I still have to update the Patreon and put that stuff. But yeah, I'll give you guys shoutouts if you like. Uh, just donate. Just give money. 
you know, whatever amount that you can, because uh, it would really help a lot in my life and just with everything in general. So thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it, and I will catch you guys, like I said, again, on another gaming news. Until then, see you guys next time. Take care.